Hey there, this is another Patrick Woods back with another video again. And um, today I just wanted to take a few minutes just to talk about the way I got into the style of music, fingerstyle guitar, as it's technically, technically called, or solo acoustic guitar. Uh, basically, uh, I started out, uh, now I, I have another video where I go into some of my influences and I talk about my influences, but I really want to talk more today about how and why I got into this style such a unique style that it is and why we love it so much and why I love it so much. Uh, basically, in high school, I started out, and you know, when I was, I started playing guitar when I was about 10. Uh, I started out, out on electric, well, actually I started out on acoustic, but it wasn't finger style. It was playing with a pick, just kind of bluegrass folk songs, just very simple stuff that my father taught me, and my father is was a folk musician. And he played with a bluegrass band and he taught me some of my first chords and I just took it from there. And then I got into electric playing, uh, rock, uh, fusion, jazz, heavy metal, just about any style I could get my hands on when I was growing up, when I was a teenager. And then I, and in high school, I started taking classical guitar lessons with a, uh, an older guy who here, here, in, here in my town who taught classical guitar. And I took about four lessons worth of rep classical repertoire, doing recitals and going through those books and learning pieces like uh, the Pavans, Louis Pavan, and uh, more of the classical repertoire that was incorporated in, in the learning process of learning that stuff. And that was before I had, when I, when I started taking classical lessons, that was before I started hearing of guys like Michael Hedges and Preston Reed and Alex DeGrasse. That was way before I was familiar with it, any of that great Wind and Hill stuff, as we all know. So basically, uh, one night I was kind of, I had this jazz fusion kind of rock uh, duo that I was playing with, with a friend. He was a keyboardist. And one night he says, have you ever heard of Michael Hedges? And I said no, so he puts it on, and I'm I'm I think it was Aerial Boundaries or something like that. He was he was either Taproot or Aerial Boundaries, something that I heard, and obviously instantly you know the feeling when you hear, hear Michael Hedges for the f first time. Your your mind just explodes, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It re it, re it reminded me of uh, the old Leo Kotke stuff that I heard when I was a kid. You know, Chet. Um, I heard Chet Atkins when I was a kid. My dad had those records around the house. He, I, I listened to Leo, Leo Kaki's guitar music constantly. And it kind of reminded me of some of the, um, the stuff that Leo Kaki had done, only different. This was, this was way different. Hedges was way different than anyone. He was like the Hendrix of acoustic, as we all, we, we've all come to know. And as much as I loved it, as much as I loved Hedges at that time, I just couldn't imagine myself playing that. I was like, there's no way I can play that. There's no way I can play this style. I'm an electric player and I, I've learned some classical and that's what I'm going to stick with. But my interest was peaked at that moment. So I started going out of my way to find more uh, acoustic guitars. This is, this is pre-internet. Okay. This is just after high school, somewhere around, you know, 1996, 97. Well, I don't want to say pre-internet because the internet obviously existed then but not in the same way it does now. So, you know, finding stuff, you can go to, you. there was no YouTube, you couldn't go to any music sites like that to sample any artist you wanted. You had to go to the music, still had to go to the music store at that point. So basically what I did was I got all, started getting hold of these fingerstyle compilation CDs. They were in music stores like uh, Taylor Guitar had a Wyndham Hill compilation of fingerstyle. I started finding out about guys like Preston Reed and Alex DeGrasse, Don Ross, uh, Muriel Anderson, all of these great fingerstyle players. And I just kept listening to it. And the first time I heard Preston Reed slap funk, you know, this thing. That, that thing. The first time I heard that, I was blown away. And I, that was the first song where it kind of made me wanted to try it for myself. I'm like, I gotta do something with this. And I was just, I became obsessed at that point. So. I started kind of, you know, getting a little lax on my classical stuff and my jazz stuff and just delve straight into fingerstyle, which was an awesome and yet scary experience because here was a style of music that there were there were no teachers for. There's no teachers for this. Like right, you can't you it's it's one of those things where there was no YouTube, no internet at that or or no 
music sites at that time for guitar teachers to teach this stuff. You, you really couldn't, I couldn't learn the style from anyone. It was just uncharted territory, uncharted waters I was jumping into. And it was kind of, it was kind of insanity. But it was, it was awesome. It was, it was exciting. I, I had to learn this stuff on my own. I couldn't just go to a guitar teacher to learn this stuff. You know, there, there was nobody in town here that was going to teach me, Preston Reed or Michael Hedges. I had to kind of start from scratch and started making up my own songs and composing my own songs from scratch. And that's what, exactly what I did. I took about a year and just took, and took the time to just really delve into the style and experiment with, you know, alternate tunings and uh, different things that I was coming up with. And lo and behold, little by little, I, I got some tunes under my belt and recorded my first album somewhere around 2000, which I don't play any of those songs anymore. To, you know, though as close, it, close as it is and near and dear to my heart, those first few tunes that I wrote just are not reminiscent of what I do today. They don't reflect anything of what I do today. But I learned from that, and I just kept going and recorded another album and another album and another album, and the next thing I know, um, you know, I'm playing these festivals, I'm doing all these gigs, um, I'm, I'm playing with some of the best players in the world. I've, you know, I've uh, opened for Andy McKee. I've met him a couple, met Andy, Andy way before he was famous. Um, so all of that just has taken me on a, on a wild journey and kind of in a wild goose chase, if you want to call it that. And I played some of the most respected venues around the country. I've, I've traveled a lot and it's, uh, it's, it's really been a great experience for me. So that's kind of how I got started in this, in this style. Um, finger style is, so you, is, is one of the most unique genres in the world. And obviously most of you know that when you tell a stranger um, about finger style, they kind of give you a blank stare, a blank look, but it's okay because for me, uh, it's kind of like inner peace. Finger style guitar is inner peace. It's, it's you're, you're at one with the instrument, there's no band. So when I'm on tour, I'm the only asshole I have to deal with. And that's a great thing because there are no other band members, nothing to get, not, I'm not knocking being a, in a band. I've been in bands and it's a, that's a great experience too. But there's something about finger style that's so in, intimate and so close to, the, close to the heart that it really speaks to people. And I think that's why there's an audience for it. It's, there's something about it that really does speak to people on a deeper level. And uh, that, that just, that's something that just can't be denied when you hear, hear the stuff. It's, it is, it, it's, it's kind of reflects the artist a deep sense in the, in the most literal sense. And it, it just, there's something inside of us that's, that's coming out and it's in a very honest and unique way. And I think a lot of people are attracted to that. And it's just such an intimate style of music. And for me, it is the ultimate piece. It's in a, in a world that's otherwise insane. It gives me sanity. And I can't think of any better reason to play the style than that. Well, I just wanted to share that with you guys and uh, hope you enjoy this. And we'll see you on another day. Keep at it. Keep guitaring. All right. We'll see you.